this, uh, but uh, Dolly, uh, as our youth advocate and program chair for the council, is, is, is intimately involved in how we're going to better serve our units and, and prepare our, our protection efforts for youth here being Youth Protection Month, but also year round. Uh, bullying is a real issue and um, it affects people in a lot of different ways. And so we'll go ahead and, and get on. Before we get going here, go ahead and go to the next slide. Dolly, do you have anything to say on the subject? If you unmute, it's easier to say something. Now, I just want to thank the people that are taking the time to, to go through this. Uh, we've got a lot of material to cover today, so I'm not going to say too much, but enjoy, take it in, let us know if you have questions. All right, well, thank you very much, Dolly, um, and I appreciate all that work and efforts that you do to help us uh, in the council, and, and especially now in protecting our youth. Um, this is a, a, a great program to do to help there and prevention um, and readiness is, is very huge part uh, for making sure that uh, our, our youth grow up in a healthy and happy way. All right, I wanna start off by talking about stopbullying.gov is really the leading uh, website uh, for this materials. And this, this, most of the slides that are here today are taken off a training that, that they have available. Not all of them, and this is not the entirety of the training, but instead of recreating the, the wheel, we wanted to go ahead and show you uh, right from um, the organization that is right on top of this uh, to on how we're gonna best um, go about uh, understanding other, what's going on with bullying and how best to prevent it. So with that, let's go ahead and show the next uh, video, I believe. I'm Maya. And I'm Darius. And we have to talk about something. It's bullying. When people think of bullying, they think of kids getting shoved into lockers or having their heads flushed in a toilet. But the truth is, bullying can be a lot more complicated than that. Bullies use their power to hurt or control others. And they might make you feel unsafe in places where you should feel protected. And that's not OK. Your school, sports teams, and after-school clubs have to be safe spaces for everyone. There was a time when I didn't feel welcome at school. Some girls that I thought were my friends had decided I wasn't cool enough for them. Everywhere I went, they either laughed at me, made fun of me, or ignored me altogether. I didn't know what to do. Yeah, there was a time when I didn't feel safe at school. I started to dread coming to football practice because one of my teammates would always take the drills too far. It didn't seem like anyone noticed. I mean, the coach was too busy focusing on the whole team to see me being bullied. No one ever has the right to hurt you or make you feel unsafe. The problem is bullying is hard to stop. And that's because most people's first reaction to bullying is to ignore it. You may feel like it will go away, but the problem with ignoring it is that it won't stop and it might even get worse. Maybe you're embarrassed or you wanna believe that it's not a big deal. Or maybe you're afraid that telling will make it worse or that whoever you need to tell won't understand or be able to help. But trust us because we've been there. If you're being bullied, there's only one way to deal with it. Stop, walk away, and tell an adult. Stop taking the abuse. Get yourself away from the situation. And go talk to an adult you trust. Tell them everything. Parents, teachers, counselors, and coaches' first priority is your safety. Believe me, there are adults that want to help you. Bullies might scare you out of telling, but if you tell an adult, the bullying is more likely to stop. The adults in our lives won't tolerate bullying, but we can't tolerate it either. We have to stand up for each other. And we all know, some kids get it the worst. Last year, a friend of ours started feeling unwelcome and unsafe at school. 
He was being bullied for weeks just for being different and having different interests than some of the other kids at school. We didn't want to see our friend get hurt or feel like he didn't belong. So we helped do something about it. Kids who are LGBTQ or who are of color or maybe have learning challenges or physical differences might get bullied the most. We need to work together to decide how safe our school can be. Our differences are our strengths. We also know that bullies need help too. But we can't tolerate their behavior. Never ignore bullying. Never stay silent. You will help yourself and help your bully more by speaking up. Stop, walk away, and tell an adult. Even if the bullying happens online or on your phone, speak up whenever you see, hear about, or experience bullying. Do it for yourself, for your friends, for the kids you've never even met. Always speak up. It's time we work together to make our schools safer for everyone. So this is a video that is, is out of uh, the Barbara Sinatra Foundation. And if you have participated in our other webinars, you'll notice that these videos are now being adopted by the Boy Scouts uh, for our, our youth protection efforts for youth, um, training youth and families. And this particular video is identified for fourth through sixth graders specifically. Um, there are other resources out there that talk about standing up for yourself and saying no and, and the like. And the research that this group has is that it's better for, for kids to, uh, again, stop, walk, and tell as, as a, 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 from elementary school up through um, early adolescence. And so this video is one that uh, exists uh, for you to use. And I highly recommend that, that this be part of the training. We'll talk about training a little bit later and refer back to this video. But now that we've seen it, I think it's a fantastic uh, to, for families to share with their kids at really any age, I think, but to uh, identify how to have the conversation about bullying, let them know that it will happen to them and let them know what to do when it ha does happen. Later we'll talk about, and we've talked about in the past, that making sure that kids are aware that these things will happen to them and this is what you do and when it happens, makes them, when it happens, a less traumatic event. Not that there won't be trauma because nobody likes to be bullied, but they'll be prepared and know what to do when it happens. And that way they'll be ready to, uh, to resolve it quickly and not have it be something that becomes a re reoccurring issue that creates a, um, a strong amount of trauma over time. All right, next video or next uh, slide. So bullying, again, any unwanted aggressive behaviors, you know, by youth, uh, groups of youth, um, again, it, it, it involves a power imbalance, uh, typically a group or an individual who has influence to somebody who doesn't have influence. And again, it's something that is repeated over and over again, um, or is likely to be repeated. And again, it could inflict harm as in physical, uh, or it could be an emotional psychological effect on people. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Next slide. All right, the, uh, you know, the behavior that we're talking about um, is, um, it, is it definitely needs to be unwanted. And, and this kind of gets into, you know, what about teasing? Well, you need to be careful about teasing because teasing um, can be misinterpreted for, for bullying depending on many different situations. But the question is, are, are the taunts and, and joking and aside wanted or unwanted? Are they participating together or are they being targeted? And again, you can, as a parent, you can look and you can look at their body language, the atmosphere. And I think we've all known, we've seen and been bullied before. And it's not that hard to be able to recognize it. Next slide. Um, again, the, it, as, as far as the, the bullying is concerned, as far as schools and other things that you're looking for, a mo if somebody walking up to you and being mean to you once is not necessarily, um, uh, considered bullying, uh, the, uh, what we're looking for is the, the greatest impact, negative impact is when it's a reoccurring and repeated behavior. Uh, we run into cranky people all the time and it's not necessarily bullying, but when you're targeted 
and it comes across uh, over multiple times, then it's, it's considered bullying and needs to be stopped right away. Next. Again, so we've talked about this idea of power imbalance. Um, you know, so you've got, you know, the, if somebody's bigger uh, or stronger, more popular, or again, associated with other people, um, again, if they're part of the majority group um, or of a high social economic status, uh, if the, uh, um, the person is, you know, has money, again, outnumbered and God help us, you know, presence of weapons. These are just things that we look at that cause this power imbalance um, that uh, creates the bullying behavior. Next. All right, so we talked about this and this is kind of, some of this stuff has be kind of dust stuff, especially those of us who work with kids for a long time, but you know, there's direct bullying, which is aggressive behaviors that occur, you know, uh, of the target of youth. So face-to-face -face interaction, pushing, hitting, you know, and um, direct harmful written and verbal communications. And then indirect, which is that, that uh, you know, like telling rumors, uh, it, uh, just excluding people, ignoring people, uh, is another form of bullying uh, in, a, in a direct style. Next. All right, and obviously uh, bullying can exist in physical with you know hitting and punching and pushing and tripping and, and the like. Um, it could be verbal, it, you know, again, taunting, name calling, threatening, um, again, all these different things that people say to each other's words can hurt as we have we heard. And again, relational. So again, some spreading of rumors, um, you know, cyberbullying is a really good example of where you won't actually deal directly with somebody, but bully them by spreading information about people outside of, uh, of dealing directly with the individual being bullied. All right, next slide. I know I'm kind of moving quickly through this, but I think some of this stuff is just kind of review and some of it is just to kind of get you thinking, making sure that you're fully aware of kind of the things that are involved with uh, bullying. And again, at least what stopbullying.gov is, is concerned about making sure that you as parents and educators and, and uh, youth mentors know. Um, so 22% of students, uh, 12 to 18, I think it's closer to 27 now. This was done in 2012. So it's not getting any better. Um, and so, you know, p kids are very likely to get bullied. And again, we're talking about reoccurring bullying as defined earlier, not just necessarily somebody be treating badly once or uh, uh, on, on, occasional, on occasion. Next. Here's some, you know, statistics, you know, um, again, being made fun of or being called names or insulted is the number one thing. Again, rumors, especially now with cyber safety and our cyber uh, bullying, is, is the spreading of rumors and um, is a, a much bigger part of our, our culture than it used to be. Uh, it's so much easy to, to send a text or a tweet or some sort of thing to a group of people and, and have, it, uh, have it a dramatic effect on somebody else. Again, physical, pushing, shoving, tripping. Um, again, exclusion, threatening of harm. You can kind of get an idea as to um, uh, where, where uh, the percentage of people are being, how they're being bullied. And also as you as a mentor can look for it, or as a parent, you can look for it too as you, in your own child to make sure that uh, you're addressing all these with them as we get into the education phase. All right, next. Again, boys and girls get it a little bit differently. Um, you know, the, I think in this day and age, we try not to, uh, you know, gender identify, um, behaviors and differences, but in, in this case, the statistics do show that, uh, that they do experience different things. Um, again, boys are more, more likely to um, bully others, um, and uh, boys are more likely to also be bullied as well. So again, boys are, are predominantly in, um, especially the physical side, which we'll get to the next slide. Next slide. Um, Again, girls are more likely to be bullied through rumor spreading, name calling, exclusion. I think, um, shoot, you've seen all these on every after school special and cyber, cyber bullying. Um, again, boys get it mostly through physical abuse, but they get the rest of it too. Cyber bullying is actually what, way, becoming more and more prevalent as time goes on. And we'll address that later. Next slide. 
Interestingly enough, I found this kind of surprising in, in doing this research uh, for this uh, program is that, that as the youth gets older, the likelihood of them being bullied becomes less. I think that partially because people and um, social groups are more likely to stand up for them uh, later and become more scare, secure in those. And also uh, that uh, uh, youth uh, are, uh, are uh, as we all know with our you know, younger kids and, and things like that, that, you know, that they're going to see a lot of it. Now, it's interesting that you know, pre-adolescence is where the big piece is. So when girls are coming and boys are coming into adolescence is where you're going to see the most verbally violent age of development. And that's when most bullying happens percentage wise. All right, next. Let's see. All right. Um, as we said in the video, you know, kids with disabilities, anybody that really has is different. And, and again, I just a little side note here, scouting really needs to, to be, you know, hallmarks of celebrating differences and people who are, uh, you know, tested deficit, autistic, um, you know, have special health needs, overweight, underweight, again, if the LGBTQ community and, um, or they speak another language or a, a different demographic, all these people are being not only bullied, but terrorized in our country in, in some way or another, if we watch the news. And so it all starts with us and, and, and making sure that people are taught that these behaviors are not okay. And we in scouting must believe that, uh, that, that we celebrate distance and uh, that we choose acts of kindness as opposed to um, the alternative of, of bullying and uh, putting people down and for whatever reason. Um, Ian Scouting want, uh, aspire to lift people up. And we'll talk about that even a little bit more. All right, next slide. Um, again, I, we've probably seen it. And I, I've been around, you know, scouting here for a long time, but anybody who's been around youth for a long time can see the, the um, you know, whether it's your own child or uh, uh, the uh, other kids that you work with, uh, you can see that that the internalizing a depression, anxiety, panic disorder, a lot of the stuff that we talked about in the mental health uh, stuff last week um, are especially, you know, uh, people will, will, um, will, will see their differences um, and, and already be uncomfortable with them, but um, they, when they're being bullied, it's, it's magnified and, self-perpetuates this belief that they're not valuable. And uh, again, that internalizing is very uh, harsh because some of that stuff you have to really pick up. Only the people who know them the best will be able to identify. And sometimes that will even be tough. And we'll talk about this later, but having good communications on a regular basis, which we also talked about in um, the mental health uh, section of, uh, from the last webinar is very important. And we'll get to that. Again, obviously, you know, people, anxiety is a big piece of this, you know, it's, it's headaches, stomach pain, you know, sleeping, again, appetite, you know, they may not, um, uh, they may not do well uh, in school, they may, that might be something that will, will be a, a challenge, or, you know, uh, it's, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, you know, they get bullied, and then they turn around and bully somebody else, and that is not uncommon, is that they, they take out their aggressions on the next rung, if you will, and, and, and it creates a cycle of bullying um, it, that is very harmful. Next. Um, also, we need to be concerned with, because we do mentor youth who are inclined to bully. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Most bullies have a, uh, a real problem with self-confidence and uh, chances are they've been bullied themselves. Uh, and these uh, antisocial and delinquent behaviors will get worse unless they're dealt with. And again, I think that they need to understand the value of, com of, of uh, kindness and to feel valued themselves and to want other people to feel valued as well. And so in scouting, we, we handle this through service. When kids perform acts of service, they understand how their, their actions can positively in fact, uh, it impact others. And those acts of service will change people's mentality about how they interact with the greater world. Again, uh, they also, you know, uh, they 
uh, people who bully are, are also going to have problems with school. They may get far more. Uh, again, remember, it's it's a it's going to be affecting their their, their personal view of themselves. So they're far more likely to do things that are 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 similar to the effects of those who are being bullied. Uh, and so we need to watch out for our bulliers as well and and help them. They are not necessarily, uh, you know, the villains in all of this. They are also victims that need our love and care and guidance. Next. Remember that we need to work and actively work to, to draw out a rep reporting from our youth about what's happening to them, especially as they get older. But that middle school age time, they, they don't want to because they, of tattling. Uh, they don't want to be retaliated. You know, they don't want it to get worse. Um, and again, I think that uh, uh, they may not have confidence that we'll be able to solve the problem. And so we need to be able to, to fulfill our part in making uh, reporting a safe thing to do and one that, that, that the people that we mentor will feel comfortable um, doing. Next. You know, Oregon is one, uh, and Washington, uh, for those of you in, in those states that are watching today, uh, are one of many different states that actually have anti-bullying laws and regulations, specifically with the, what it does for schools. Uh, but uh, it, it, is, it is true that, uh, that kids in the juvenile justice system can be um, impacted by severe bullying. And so uh, there are guidelines in the state that uh, protect youth that are being bullied and, and real serial bulliers from um, uh, continuing that behavior. All right, next slide. All right, so now we're gonna talk about best practices in bullying and some preventions. And we'll talk a little bit in here about, you know, some diverge a little bit from Stop Bullying and some other resources that are out there. Uh, and also talk about what you could do when you run into somebody who's been bullied. So let's go ahead and, and go into this next section. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I was gonna do something. Do we have any questions at this stage before we, uh, uh, on Facebook or anywhere? I'm not seeing any currently. All right, very good. I mean, just go ahead and feel free if you have any questions, put it into the question and answers, or if you're on Facebook, go ahead and just put it in, in the comments and, and we'll definitely get to them. I know I'm moving quickly, but there's a lot of material here. I don't wanna miss out in the hour that we have together. So um, it, I, I'm hoping that I'm not moving too fast. Uh, uh, this video will be available for you to record and, and, and watch later. All right, next slide. All right. Um, so again, stopbullying.gov has, you know, a prevention training and, and all these resources that are available to you. And I can't, I don't have time to go into all of them for you, but um, we'll send out the links um, here to stopbullying.gov and you can see all these things. I mean, it's not a hard one to, to know, um, uh, but we, we uh, at the end, I'll share all the resources that, that we have. And again, I would highly recommend, you know, if you're looking at, at working with you and your family, um, working with your school or church or even your scouting organization to double check this website and the materials that are there for you. Because I think they're really good. Some of the of which I will say they're even better than the stuff that scouts have, which we'll share in a little bit. All right, next slide. All right, so the um, you're gonna see that the um, there's another uh, support module out there for, um, uh, safe uh, supportive learning.ed and this is predominantly um, uh, for educators but there's a lot of resources out there if you want to go and look about how you can um, uh, uh, get this information and uh, and utilize it in, in your own way um, in a second here I'm going to show you a, a, a video that comes off of the um, stopbullying.gov website. And the importance of this next video is something that we should be teaching our youth and that is standing up for bullies, standing up to bullies. And, and the, um, the one thing that has been a known um, deterrent of bullying is when people uh, come to the rescue of one being bullied. People see it, they identify it, and then they come to the rescue. And that is something we can definitely teach scouts and really should be an active program and maybe even a game you know, it's kind of like a, a anti-tag. If somebody's tagged and everybody goes to them and supports them. And um, 
Uh, and so uh, let's watch this little video, which I think does a great job and it could be used in, a, in a, a, a session with your scouts or your family to promote what you should do if you see somebody being bullied. Check this out. I'm going to squeeze this pudding down weenie weenie shirt. OK, if I join you, Milton? Yeah, sure. So, how are your tuba lessons going? I'm not playing tuba anymore. No? That's too bad. I remember when you played that punk rock song at the talent show. That was pretty cool. What's this? Weenie Weenie made a new friend? Does this mean you're a weenie too? Hey, Josh. Hey, Milton. You know my name? Sure, you're the tuba player. You must be really dedicated to lug that tuba around everywhere. <laughs> he got pudding in his mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we've all had just about enough of your bullying. Yeah, stick a brick in it, Brick. You know, the school's mac and cheese is so bad that the chocolate pudding actually improves it. <laughs> Shut up, you two. Good one, Milton. Here, I'll share my lunch with you. No, I was serious. This is way better. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't need a fantasize. My real life's pretty good already. That's kind of a fun little video. And, uh, and it definitely um, goes to the point that, um, you can go to the next slide, Chris, if you can. I know it's kind of boring. Um, to the point that there's something to do when we see it. We need to teach our scouts and that they need to grab a buddy and come to the, the defense of those who are being bullied. And, um, and I think that uh, is part of uh, the Choose Kindness campaign that the Cascade Pacific Council has come up with over the years, which we'll talk about here in a second, that you can utilize a very simple little campaign it's a simple little message, but it can go a long ways to establishing a culture of kindness and safety in your in your um, website. I mean, in your um, your meetings and, and interactions with others. Uh, I want to draw attention to the uh, the count, the National Office uh, National count Boy Scouts of America website on bullying awareness, and they've got some interesting um, materials in there. Again, speaking up and being upstanding, and and some other resources. A, a pile of things that are there online that, that can be also used as tools. Um, I, I, I would tell you that I wouldn't hold my hat completely on uh, the national website's uh, materials. I think that there's really good stuff elsewhere. I've showed you stuff from Stop Bullying. I showed you stuff from the, remember that video we watched at the beginning? Well, that's from the Barbara Sinatra Foundation. All of these uh, resources provide a wonderful collection of things that we can use to ensure that our scouts um, are aware of bullying and know what to do when it happens to them or if they see it themselves. So let's go on to the next slide. Choose kindness. Uh, this is a value set that is developed by the Cascade Pacific Council, not the value, that's uh, obviously one of the 12 points of the scout law. But um, we want every scout to understand that scouts care about the feeling of others, that scouts respect others, and appreciate differences. Let's say that again. Respect others and appreciate differences. It's a wonderful lesson to be teaching kids right now if they watching the news or experiencing any of what's going on in the world. And again, scouts protect those who are being mis mistreated. That's where we stand up and we talk to those who are being or are bullied. We support those who, um, it, like happened in that video and that we have a role as a scout because scouts are kind 
to care, respect, and protect. That's the basis of the Choose Kindness campaign. There's no literature, just a poster, discussion, and action. And I, it's, uh, its simplicity is in its, its, its in its best. And notice it doesn't say bullying. We're not asking people not to bully. We're telling them to choose kindness. And that is what we want to do with kids um, in, in our education. All right, let's talk a little bit about cyberbullying. Um, obviously, the BSA has a program called CyberChip, and we'll talk a little bit about that, partnered with a group called NetSmarts. Um, and also, uh, I, once again, uh, in a second here, I'm gonna show you a video that's come from the Barber Sinatra Foundation, again, on cyberbullying, which I think is as good or better than all the resources that we have in CyberChip, which is a lot. But um, we'll talk a little bit more about CyberChip in a moment, but cyberbullying is far more prevalent nowadays than uh, physical bullying or, or, or the like. Uh, kids are far more likely, especially now, because they don't see anybody, to um, have their name blasted badly or in the like. And, and, and again, if you have a child somewhere between um, um, maybe late third grade through seventh grade, th they are probably, uh, they're, they're in the midst of the verbal violence age and they're going to see a lot, they're going to feel a lot and we need to be prepared, especially through those age to make sure they're prepared and know how to deal with this. So let's go ahead uh, on to the the short little video that we have on cyberbullying from Barbara Sinatra Foundation. Hey, I'm Darius. And I'm Maya. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of addicted to my phone and my computer. We both are, but hey, they do great things. They're great at waking us up. They let us have important conversations with our friends. And they keep us informed about the world. So yeah, our phones and computers are amazing. But we don't always do amazing things with them. It's all too common that we hear about our friends being cyberbullied. Or maybe we've even experienced cyberbullying ourselves. Cyberbullying is any sort of communication through your phone or your computer that's meant to hurt or intimidate another person. If it happens to you, it's hard not to react. And if you're the one doing it, it's easy to forget that you might be hurting a real person. You never know what someone might be going through. With so much negativity on social media, more and more kids are experiencing anxiety and depression. And I would never want to be the person who makes that worse. You've probably heard the phrase, think before you speak, a million times. But this might be a new one. Think before you post. The next time you want to say something out of anger or make a joke about someone online, think about how it might feel if it happened to you. You might think they deserve it, or you're just joking around. But what you're about to do is bullying. If you see it happening to someone else, be courageous enough to speak up for them in a positive way. In order to stand up for yourself, remember these tips. Block, report, and tell an adult. Block the person bullying you. Report the abuse if you can. And remember, keep the messages you might need to show them to an adult. Tell an adult you trust. They want to help you. Remember, what we say to each other matters. Yeah, you never know what someone else might be going through. And if you're being bullied, it's not your fault. No one has the right to hurt you or make you feel unsafe, online or in person. Remember, block, block report, report, and tell an adult. adult. Even though it doesn't always feel like it, there's so much more to life than our phones and social media. So once again, this is a, uh, a video uh, predominantly for, you know, again, third through seventh grade, fourth through sixth grade. Um, the, uh, 
there it, it, from the Barbara Sinatra Foundation. And I think it does a great job for that age group talking a little bit about that and keeps on the spirit of the other youth protection things that are happening there. And so I, even though that that doesn't exist yet on our cyber chip um, site, uh, I fully expect to, and I would highly recommend that we bring that video online to, um, to your kids, especially um, in the third through seventh grade. Um, and this is one of those places where we start talking about prevention and as a mentor, as a parent, um, you have to, uh, this is Todd, the, the, the parent talk, talking here a bit, but, um, and, and long time youth mentor, you can't assume that kids know that you're willing to listen to them and that you desire to have a trusted communication and safety space with them. It's one of those, as, as they start the young through adolescence, you have to continue to remind them and they're gonna to continue to push back because they don't want, um, especially in the adolescence, they don't want to be reminded that they need help at some times. They're struggling for their dependence, independence and, and moving away from a very dependent nature. And they, anything that reminds them of that makes it difficult. So you have to continually remind them and provide opportunities for those discussions. And um, nice thing about scouting is that we can use programs to do that. Also, you can use other mentors to have those conversations. Um, you, uh, if, if, if your child is, if you have an adolescent child who is not being very responsive to you, well, let one of the other leaders know and see if they can get some get groundwork in, in providing that um, communication to them at this point. And also validation, because I know that as a leader, I constantly uh, had conversations with, with adolescent youth where I had to remind them that their parents love them. I know it. And that was very disarming to them because they knew it too. They just don't want to realize it, you know? And it was kind of an interesting uh, experience. So anyway, um, the Cyberchip program is a program uh, for all the age groups in scouting and it has different levels of programming. If you see down below there, the Cyberchip requirements, uh, um, one through um, uh, uh, grades one to three, four to five. And all these are, are programs of various things to help um, uh, kids at different age groups understand what they're doing. And the, the older you get, the longer of the cyber chip requirements have happened to be. And um, it's really good. So I check out the website. I mean, if, if, uh, if you, if you, you know, we'll put the, the link in, in here when we get to the resources, but you could just, you know, Google cyber chip or, um, you know, or scouting cyber chip and you're going to see it. Um, it's also, I believe on our website, but the um, it's a wonderful program. And, and again, this month, um, uh, is, uh, is a great month to uh, get that done and uh, work with all of your youth to, to, to experience um, this level of trace safety. And let me remind you once again that a prepared child is far more likely to um, um, be able to deal with challenges when that comes up in their lives and have uh, the tools to be able to deal with that. And, and like I said, in uh, example I've used in the past, is that like when I was in high school going through my driver's ed training, we saw a video on what to do for hydroplaning. And obviously it wasn't something we could reproduce but unless it was raining outside and we tried, but they taught us how to deal with it if it happened. And so the first time I was driving on my own as a, uh, and, and it happened and I knew to, you know, keep my you know, steering square and I let up my foot off the accelerator and coast through the, uh, the, the hydroplane, uh, I was ready for it. And it was a less traumatic event. I knew what to do. Someone told me it was gonna happen to me. It happened to me, I knew what to do. And then I gained confidence on how to deal with hydroplaning in the future. Now I don't even think about it. And so um, in fact, it's almost kind of fun. <laughs> so uh, uh, the, uh, and it's the same thing with this youth protection things and, and other things we help to prepare our children, the more that, that they are prepared to know what's happening and they and they're, they're aware that it will happen to them, um, that, that the likelihood that, that it will happen to them or somebody that they know, then they're far more likely to deal with it when they see it and they can also recognize it when it's happening. All right, next slide. All right, so uh, I'm not gonna go into, but on there is the, is the scout law and the cyberbullying um, and cyber safety pledge 
And um, this is a wonderful thing to have your scouts do. So if you do a, a program where you're you know, seeing the video and you go over these things, you bring on the, the, um, uh, the Choose Kindness poster and put together a little program for, for you and your scouts for a, a meeting on, on the subject, uh, involve the families and the like, and um, make sure that uh, they share this information with their parents as, as they do it. We'll know that uh, it's a wonderful way to help prepare them as we go. All right. All right. Next slide. We're going to talk a little bit about what happens. What happens if you see it? What do you do? Well, you know, when, when, when bullying happens and, and you're, and you're there, right. As a, as a youth leader, a mentor, or even as a parent, you know, well, first thing you want to do is make sure that you separate the children involved and, and make sure that everybody is safe. I get, and if there's any, you know, medical or mental, if somebody's, you know, just crying or, or upset or whatever you need or injured, you're, um, Again, we're, we're, I guess we're out of cyberbullying now, but I mean, you, you need to, um, uh, you know, address that. Make sure that you're calm, reassure everybody involved that, uh, that uh, everything's okay. And then, uh, and then as you intervene, uh, you know, be respectful. What last thing you want to do is come at uh, them, um, the, the bullier and the child and it make them worse by basically losing control yourself and you let your emotions take you away from working through the, the situation because you could actually make the situation worse. So take a deep breath, calm down and be model respectful behavior because that's the behavior that you want them to have in solving their problems. All right, next slide. Um, again, um, I think this is, happens a lot, especially, you know, um, there's a term out there that can be very harmful if used badly, and that is boys will be boys or girls will be girls. Oh, that's just that's just the way it is with kids. Oh, that just will toughen them up. I want to be prepared for real life, so I just let it happen. You know, yes and no. That 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 is, it's okay if if it happens. You know, but did you train them your the youth on how to deal with these things, right? And and when you're watching it happen, are you evaluating and then coming back and having a reflection with them about how they dealt with those situations? Um, are you guiding them into proper behavior that will serve them well in the future? Or are you just uh, abdicating their ability to learn it on their own? And, and I, I highly recommend the latter or the former. Uh, be part of the education and development. Um, and again, I think, when this happens, and especially uh, for pre-adolescents, making a huge deal out of it in front of others is the wrong thing to do. And I've seen that happen. I've seen an adult, uh, upset adult come in, yelling and screaming at uh, somebody, and the person who was being bullied even feels worse, and the situation just didn't get better, and we created a worse issue for everybody involved as opposed to um, you know, being able to have a calm, methodical, and guided approach to dealing with bullying. Next. Um, again, well, as we start talking about, um, when, when it happens, you're going to need to, uh, look at a couple different approaches and, you know, one, we're going to need to make sure that, that, uh, we have the plans and that, that we can look back and see, okay, this bullying happened. How did it happen? How, how can we prevent it in the future? What are some things that we can do, uh, to better do that, um, Maybe we need to re, it, it's happened in our den or in our, our uh, troop meeting or on a camp out and maybe we should redo this or in your neighborhood or in your house and, and maybe redo the training and, and re-sign the uh, agreement uh, from people to, uh, to, again, choose kindness. All right, next slide. Um, Again, in some cases, as uh, that if if you discover something that's been very reoccurring, you may have a uh, a traumatic um, response, uh, an, an event that will require um, support, and working with the parent, um, with uh, the, uh, the the uh, their family, and to to get them the proper support that they may need is something that you may be uh, needing to do. Or if you've noticed that this happened to your own child, and uh, and you're noticing that their behavior has changed because of, of this experience that you may need to consider that as well. Next slide. 
again, this, I talked about this before, but you know, it's more than just talking about bullying. You need to make sure that we, we regularly have conversations about bullying and how to prevent it and make it part of our culture that we talk about. But in addition to that, we need to talk about how best do we protect ourselves? How do we have self-care? How do we, uh, who are the trusted people to help us with problems? And number one is we don't have to solve everything on our own. Uh, being, uh, as adults, we, we look to others for guidance and support. And as youth, they should learn to do so as well. Next. Uh, next, a couple other tools on, uh, I want you to make, be, be uh, again, uh, some youth engagement tools that are available uh, on the website. Some interesting things in there. I, I think that I th would use these as a, guide, a guidance guideline in things I would do. I didn't find any of these things were necessarily spoke in my language, but they definitely um, got to thinking and on how you might have conversations. So it's a really good resource. All right, next slide. I didn't check out this app. It was part of their uh, their, their program, so I apologize for that. Um, I don't know um, how, I, I think this is just a, a, a tool that you can have on your phone to be able to help and recognize bullying and knowing what to do if you see it so you don't have to continually remember it on your own. Next slide. Um, again, and then, uh, Stop Bullying has stuff about being more than a bystander, talks more about how best to react to uh, these uh, challenges when, when they occur in your, um, in your life uh, and how best to stand up for it with others. Again, there's some resources there. So I'm just kind of giving you some ideas to some other resources that are there, All right? All right, so here are a bunch of, of, of links um, that are here. Um, Chris, can you copy those and put them in the chat just so that people um, can have those. Um, um, I don't know that I can. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't have that up um, right now, but if you could, that way that they, that people can have access to them. Um, and these, and these resources are, are available to you, um, uh, at things. I, I didn't talk about, um, uh, the kidpower.org. Um, kidpower.org is another, uh, really cool, uh, resource. Uh, I put it on here as an example that you don't have to solve, come up with your all these things on your own. There, you can utilize other programs out there, and there's plenty. That lower one, that uh, fightchildabuse.org, is where all those Barbara um, uh, Sinatra Foundation materials are, and you can can be found. Um, and so again, there's a lot of things out there, and again, just googling, you know, uh, videos or resources to talk to my my kids on on bullying, you'll, you'll find a bunch of things in addition to, again, the scouting.org cyberchip and, and then the scouting.org training on, on protection and bullying as well. All right. All right, so now it's time for questions. I think that's my last slide, Chris, is that right? Yep, that's it. And Wow. Definitely. All right, any questions um, that we have uh, from uh, anybody online or that would at this stage fresh here and check and i didn't see any just a few moments ago i mean you covered so much this is such great great material and uh dolly did you have anything to add any other thoughts it's really just fantastic material and and all of the sinatra foundation material you guys have been reviewing over the past few weeks it's it really is just great quality yeah i'm really impressed by the sinatra things i think it'll make it a a lot easier to introduce to the younger children ways that they can protect and defend themselves against these things that they may not even have a clue of how to deal with. I was particularly interested in the um, that there are signs for not only the, the, the person who would be bullied, but also how to identify um, an abuser as well. Um, and the lasting effect that it can have on kids. Um, again, drawing back to Todd's comment that very similar reactions in our youth mental health videos. So um, it requires adult intervention. So please, if you, if you see something, you don't know how to handle it, then reach out. We do have our, our Scouts First hotline. Um, and that is something that is always there. If you have an, an item of, of concern that you're not sure if it should be investigated, report it. And somebody who's in the know will investigate it. 
Yeah, that's a super, super good point. And uh, yes, we'll definitely, uh, we'll have all of these resources here on, and a recording of this actually on the, on the cpcbsa.org website slash uh, webinars. So you'll see that as well. And we'll, we'll add a link to the youth protection page as well to all of this. And we'll have buttons to all of these things. We'll have a download of the uh, Choose Kindness uh, poster. So you can actually print that out, put that up on uh, in your troop room or your pack room, wherever you're meeting. It's a, it's really great. We see those around camp as well. So it's a good, good really good reminder. Todd, any other thoughts? I think that the only last thing I would close with is that when it comes to our youth protection efforts and the things that we do, there are many different roles that you may play. It, and we need to drill down all the way down to the role of the parent and take that on as a mantra that we need to make sure that our parents are educated about this stuff and are having those conversations with their children and helping them with that. So whatever you're doing for you and your unit, and please do a program for you and your unit utilizing these things. And we do have... Um, you know, recognition available to you um, uh, for participating as a, as a Dan or as a family or individual on these programs. Because you as a parent, the, all this stuff works good for you sitting at home talking to your kids about what's going to happen to them. And then have it also being, you know, validated by their uh, unit leaders and, and their youth as they talk about it as well. And really, in the end, if if any one child can have a posse, if you will, of people that are, are actively involved in protecting the, each other um, and through this, uh, through uh, this, and also agree to protect others, which to me is what a Cub Scout Den is, a Scout Patrol might be, or a Scout Troop is, uh, will definitely make a big difference in helping sure that kids are safe and also that other people will be safe as well. So thank you very much, everybody, for participating in, in this. And uh, and thank you for all you do to help kid, keep kids safe. Here, here. And join us next week. I know Todd's going to jump off to a, a call just about this issue here. So next week, we're going to be talking about summer camp updates. Uh, the date is wrong there. I put the date wrong date in there. But you'll know that next week is our last uh, webinar of the month. And so, of course, we're focusing on summer camp updates on those last webinars of the month. So please tune in for those of you attending, for those of you thinking about attending, for those of you who have questions, because they will, the team will answer all of them. It's going to be really, it's just such a great resource. We're constantly updating our pages at, uh, you can see that on the webinar pages, as well as cpcbsa.org slash COVID. There's updates there too. So, so please join us for that. Really would love to have you and ask any questions you have. So thank you so much for joining us today, and we will see you next week.